Hello everyone, back to in today's first video. We're going to have a look at the ECMWF 30 day ensemble for today's first video. This is going to take us into the second half of September. Uh, so we can only look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies uh, with this. We can't have a look at the uh, heights or mean sea level pressure anomalies for the next 30 days, unfortunately. But get a rough idea uh, of where the highs and the lows are likely to be sitting in terms of uh, where it's warmest and driest and where it's coolest and wettest, if you see what I mean. So we'll know roughly what the broad pattern is that model is forecasting uh, for the next month. This has come from the Hungarian uh, Met Office. So a big thank you to the Hungarian Met Office for supplying these charts. Eventually, we will be able to show you uh, mean sea level pressure or and or height anomalies as well. Very gradually, the ECMWF is getting more and more of their longer range, uh, formerly very uh, restricted access stuff online, just taking a while uh, to do it. But slowly but surely, uh, of course, the, uh, the wheels of the progress do move quite slowly at times with some of these agencies. But very gradually, more and more information is coming online. I'm convinced that within the next year or two, We'll be able to show you the full range of 30 day, actually 42 day uh, sort of uh, uh, information that uh, is from the ECM WF that used to be very highly restricted access uh, stuff. So it's just taking a little bit of time, but uh, it's a start anyway. We can show you temperature and precipitation. Uh, ensembles for the next month from the ECM uh, WF. We're going to do that for you uh, very shortly. Just save it today's second video coming up uh, this afternoon on the homepage. That will be having a look at uh, the weather next week to 10 days. High pressure's coming back, so it looks like we're going to have a pretty warm and dry start to September. But more on that uh, as we get through to this afternoon. So we'll begin by having a look at the week one temperature anomaly. This is taking us from the 27th of uh, August through to the 2nd of September. So actually a relatively coolish week coming up in the weekend across western parts of Europe. So Scandinavia, sort of Sweden, Norway, down to Denmark, down to the low countries, to northern France, and then the UK and Ireland, only coming out with average and in some instances uh, slightly cooler than average temperature anomalies being forecast in those areas. From Germany eastwards, it's a warmer scene. So from Germany through Poland, I mean, going back to Ukraine, and then up into the northeastern part of Europe, it's generally uh, warmer than average. Not a huge anomaly, but even so, we're talking about one to three degrees above average in many places at its warmest. Western parts of Russia, really quite hot there. Temperatures between three and six degrees above average. And usually for this summer, the uh, southeastern part of Europe is relatively warm as well. So uh, the Balkans only around average there. But eastwards of that to Romania and going down uh, towards the southeast, Turkey, Greece, those areas coming out uh, warmer than average. And then we've got the Mediterranean, which remains a mixed bag. It's been a rather mixed summer for the Med. Italy, for example, is coming out a little bit cooler than average as are uh, Corsica and Sardinia, but going back to the Balearic Islands of Ibiza, Mallorca and Menorca, a little bit warmer than average there. And then we get to Spain and Portugal and so uh, around the costas here in the eastern part of Spain, around average temperature anomalies there. But uh, central Spain, back towards Portugal, is coming out warmer than average. So it remains a bit of a mixed bag with those temperature anomalies varying uh, across the Mediterranean. Further north, generally it's warmest in the north and the east, and it's coolest in the northwest and in the west. Precipitation anomalies in the week ahead looking like this. So generally a little bit warmer than average, a little bit drier than average, I should say, uh, for much of Northern Europe. So Scandinavia is coming out drier than average. The UK, Ireland also coming out quite substantially uh, drier than average there. Uh, so also going to central parts of Europe, it's a little bit drier than average for Germany and Poland. Northern France is a bit wetter than average. Southern France is a bit drier than average. Spain and Portugal, a little bit drier than average there. And then mixed through the Mediterranean, Overall, possibly a little bit on the wet of an average side, especially the parts of Italy and going down uh, towards Greece. The Balkans looks like they've got a mix of uh, drier and uh, wetter conditions uh, close to the Adriatic. So a bit of a mixed bag, but generally dry steam in the north. It looks a little bit more unsettled across the southern parts of Europe. 
Week 2 temperature anomalies are looking like that. This one is taking us from the 3rd through to the 9th of September. So through the first week of September. And we see that uh, many parts of Europe are going much warmer in this week. The UK and Ireland perched out uh, on the very edges of Europe next to the Atlantic Ocean. Just coming out average to a, actually for the Republic of Ireland can be a little bit cooler than average. So that's the coolest uh, place in Europe and then possibly down to Portugal as well. But elsewhere pretty much all areas are coming out warmer than average in this week. Southern parts of Italy maybe a little bit on the cooler than average side. But to be honest, other than the extreme west and northwest, this first week of September is looking warm or very warm across much of uh, Europe. So you see this huge mass of uh, sort of orange colours that we've got here, orange to uh, sort of dark orange. And we see that, again, the temperature normally is between around 1 and uh, 6 degrees above average through this area. So uh, definitely a significantly warmer than average start September than many parts of Europe. The shorter range ones are trying to get that warmth into the UK and Ireland as well, I should say. So the ECM 30-day ensembles are seeing that in the UK and Ireland we stay a little bit, uh, a little bit closer to average through this week. For Ireland, a little bit cooler than average, but the shorter range stuff does want to import that heat into uh, the UK as well through the first week of September. The, temp the uh, precipitation anomalies look like that. So uh, we find that, again, much of Northern Europe comes out uh, drier than average once again. Drier than average through Scandinavia, drier than average through the UK and through Ireland as well. Perhaps a little bit surprisingly, many parts of Central Europe, so France, Low Countries, Germany, Poland, uh, much of Central Europe actually coming out with uh, average precipitation on it. So it does imply that it will be very warm. The high pressure is probably centred a little bit further north. So I think the model wants a high pressure to be up here and then possibly uh, around that sort of area uh, again, which maybe leaves central parts of Europe going a little bit towards lower pressure. So uh, possibly it turns a bit thundery there, although it's very warm across central Europe, it is possibly a little bit thundery uh, through those central parts of Europe. And then we get down into the Mediterranean, it's a mixed signal there, Portugal looks drier than average, elsewhere it's close to average through that uh, first week of September with precipitation in the Med. Temperature anomalies for week three, going from the 10th to the 16th of September, are looking like this. So the warmest anomalies to average are in the north and the northeast and the east of Europe. So it does look as though those warmest temperature anomalies that get through towards the middle part of September are gradually being pushed into the east and the northeast. Many western parts of Europe, so the UK, Ireland, much of France, down to Spain and Portugal, and possibly the uh, low countries, Belgium, Holland, uh, uh, those areas are coming out close to average with precipitation. Denmark and Germany look quite warm. And then through the Mediterranean, again, it's close to average through many parts of the Med. So neither particularly uh, particularly hot or particularly cool. Uh, just close to average, which of course in the middle of September is still going to be pleasantly warm. Uh, really very warm down uh, through the Mediterranean, through the middle of September. Rainfall wise, it looks like the driest conditions are to be found for the UK and for Ireland too. So, possibly this is hinting at the high pressure is beginning to pull back into the Atlantic, pull back into the west of the UK, if you like, which would leave us doing something a bit like that uh, with the flow, with the jam. That would explain why it's starting to turn just that little bit, a uh, little bit cooler in the west and through central parts of Europe with the heat being pushed into the east or the northeast of Europe. So, it's it looks rather dry of an average through the middle of September for the UK and for Ireland. Most other parts of Europe close to average. Notice it's going wetter around uh, Italy and over the Adriatic towards the Balkans. So some uh, autumnal type instability possibly starting to uh, get generated around that uh, eastern part of uh, the Mediterranean and up into the Adriatic. Uh, and perhaps in the holiday islands as well, we may see a few signs of some heavy showers beginning to break out. Uh, through that central basin of the Mediterranean uh, as well. But overall, most parts of Europe actually have average precipitation through the middle of September. And then we're going to the second half of September. This takes us from the 17th through to the 23rd of September. And gradually, again, 
possibly because we just because we're uh, weakening the signal, uh, but very gradually these warmer than average anomalies are draining away, becoming confined to the very far northeast now of uh, of Europe and back into sort of uh, into northwestern parts of Russia. Uh, and I suppose down this eastern side of the uh, Med, particularly around the Black Sea, we may be coming uh, out a little bit warmer than average air. But most parts of Europe, again, are just having average temperature anomalies. Uh, notice it's a bit cooler than average, once again, for Ireland, and also a bit cooler than average close to Portugal. So very gradually, I think, an Atlantic flow possibly is starting to re-establish and push those uh, westerly winds into Europe. Remember, in September, westerly winds will generally be cooler still than easterlies. Uh, from October onwards, that kind of starts to reverse, and westerlies will tend to be warmer than easterlies. But in September, westerlies will still be cooler, really, than uh, easterly winds. As far as precipitation is concerned, much of the Med is uh, turning a bit wetter than average, so some autumnal thunderstorms starting to kick off by looking a bit through the Med, and particularly, again, over the Adriatic Sea, uh, and down into the Balkans, it looks like it's going to be wetter through those areas. But generally, much of southern Europe looks like, at the very least, it's turning a bit showery through this period. Again, many northern parts of Europe just coming out with average precipitation. The sea laws definitely get weaker the further out uh, we go. The, the below average precipitation... It looks like, if anything, it's moving further northwest out to that sort of part of the Atlantic. So possibly, possibly, not much to go on, but it is possibly a hint about in the second half of September, we might begin to generate some sort of high pressure uh, not far from Iceland. And if we could go far enough north, possibly up towards Greenland. That's me sort of interpreting what could be going on there. And if that was to be happening, then actually this area where it's average precipitation across this central northwestern part of Europe and northern part of Europe, that area will probably be uh, more unsettled than the model is shown. Remember, it does, the signal does get weaker uh, the further out we go. So that's how it's looking for the next uh, month. Interestingly, it doesn't really show any particularly warm weather for the UK and for Ireland. But the shorter range ones, as I say, are very keen to uh, get that heat to us through next week. There'll be more about that in today's second video update. But we could well be in line for some uh, really quite warm temperatures to return uh, next week. Uh, but as I say, the 30 day long range model does not really show that heat getting into the UK. And however, most parts of Europe does look like it's going to be a very warm start to September. And then as you go through to the middle of September, the second half of the month, possibly signs that uh, we cool things down again. The Mediterranean, as has been the case throughout this summer, just looks a bit mixed. Will be some warmer, drier conditions. But also, as we go along, particularly as we get into the middle of September, possibly signs that we start to generate the first sort of heavy showers and storms of the autumn season down there through the med. Right, so that's your 30-day ECM uh, updates for this week. We'll do it all over again uh, next Tuesday. Coming up this afternoon, we'll have a look at the weather for next week to 10 days. High pressure is coming back, as we've already established for much of Northern Europe. And uh, how much influence that has on the UK, we'll find out in today's second video update. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.